Hi, and welcome again to this session. This is the fourth installment of our discussion of problem solving, a topic in mathematics in the modern world. During our first session, we discussed Polya's four steps in solving problems. During our second session, we solved problems by working backwards. In last session, we solved problems by looking for a pattern. Today, we're going to be solving problems by drawing a picture or a diagram. Sometimes, difficult problems can be easily solved by drawing a picture, making an illustration, or looking at a diagram. We first solve this problem. Show that square root of 5 plus 2 square root of 5 is equal to 3 square root of 5. It is easy to imagine or draw or illustrate what 5, 2, 3, or any other positive integers. But what about square root of 5? The answer lies in a very important theorem called the Pythagorean theorem. First, recall that in a right triangle, in a right triangle, the square of this side plus the square of this side is equal to the square of this side. This is called the famous Pythagorean theorem. Conversely, if the square of one side and the square of the other side is equal to the square of the third side, then the triangle is a right triangle. We are going to draw square root of 5 using right triangles. Consider, consider our triangle in which one side is 1 and the other side is 2. A quick computation shows that 1 squared plus 2 squared is equal to 5. Getting the square root shows that this side is square root of 5. We can use the same concept to draw 2 square root of 5. All we need to do is to have a 2 here and a 4 here. Notice that what we have is 2 squared plus 4 squared which is equal to 20. And the square root of 20 is actually 2 square root of 5. Now that we know how to draw square root of 5 and 2 square root of 5, we can now solve the problem. First, consider this to be square root of 5. What we do is we're going to attach or add square root of 5 to 2 square root of 5 by drawing another triangle so that the other side should be longer, okay, is 2 square root of 5. So just for this discussion, just imagine that this is 2 square root of 5. We are going to prove that this is, well, we know that this is square root of 5 added to 2, to 2 square root of 5. And we're going to prove that these two together is 3 square root of 5. Now, take a look at what we've formed here. If we draw this line here, a straight line, sorry for the, for the bad line. I'm going to use a straight line. So... If we draw a line here and draw another line from here to here, you see that we have formed 
another big right triangle. But how long is this is this side? Well earlier we know that this one is one and then this one is two. Also this one is two earlier and this one is four. Meaning if this is one this must be two so this whole thing is three from here to here. In the same manner, if this is 2, this one is 2, and this is 4, then this side here below is 6. Doing the necessary computation, let's see. We have 3 squared plus 6 squared. Squared. That is equal to 9 plus 36. And 9 plus 36 is 45. Now getting the square root of 45. Now 45 is equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. And as we know, the square root of 9 is 3. And there you have it. Because we form a triangle with sides 3, 6, and 3 squared to 5, we know that this is right. And so this square to 5 and these 2 square to 5 must be equal to 3 square to 5. And we know that this is correct because we just uh, joined this square to 5 and this 2 square root of 5. Let's go to our next problem. The floor of a room is in the shape of a square ABCD with each side of length 27. A cat walks on the floor in the following pattern. First, the cat walks from A to B, turns 90 degrees clockwise, and walks in a line one-third of the distance it has traveled in the previous step. The cat relocates to a new location again, turns 90 degrees clockwise, and walks in a line one-third of the distance it walked in the previous step. Where is the cat relative to A, and how far has the cat traveled? Let's first try to understand the problem. First, we have a square. Suppose this is a square of side 27. So since it's a square, all of the sides is 27. And then the cat did three things. First, it walks from A to B. So if this is A and this is B, the cat started here and then it walked up to here. Turns 90 degree clockwise. So 90 degree, 90 degree clockwise means it turns right. So it goes into this direction. One third of the distance it, had, it has traveled in the previous step. So this is 27, and one third of this is 9. So the cat walks 9 feet from B going to here. And then it turns again 90 degrees clockwise and walks one third of the distance it walked in the previous step. So it turns right again in this direction and walk one third of the previous step. This is 9, so one third of this is 3. So the question is, how? where is the cat relative to A? So here, where is it relative to A? And then, how far has the cat traveled? So let's take a look at the illustration. And this is what we have so far. We know that, cat will, that the cat will walk from A to B. Then from B, it will turn right and walk one third as from A to B. So from here, it will walk one third, so it's nine. And then from the previous location, it turns right again and walk one third as far. So from here, it turns to the right, and then it will walk one third as far. And this is our question. So let's draw, let's draw the, the scenario of the problem. So the cat started here at A, so we are going to walk from A to B. 
And then, we are going to walk from B, about 9 units from here, 9 units. And then from here, we're going to walk about 3 units from here. So the question is, how far is the cat relative to A? So we wanted to know this one. So we wanted to know this one. This is a question. This is our question. Um, sorry. So we wanted to know this. We wanted to know that. And we wanted to know how far is this one, this, this distance. Well, this distance is easy to compute because this is 27. This is 9. And this is 3. So um, the distance is actually just 27 plus 9 plus 3, which is 39. So we know the answer here is 39 feet. 39 feet. Uh oh, sorry. The second question 39 feet. 39 feet. So to get the answer to the first question, how far is the cat from A? All we need to do is to use, again, Pythagorean theorem. Well, let's drop this line here. Oops, sorry. Let's see the shape. Let's drop the line, this line here, right here. Okay, so we know that this is um, 9. This one is 9. And because this whole thing, this whole thing is 27 and this one is 3, this must be 24. This must be 24. So we're, we have 24 here and 9 here. So computing using Pythagorean theorem, so we have 24 squared, squared, plus 9 squared is equal to 24 squared is just is 5, 7, 6, 6, and 9 squared is 81, 81. So overall, we're looking at 5, 7, 6 plus 81, which is equal to 6, 5, 7. So getting the square root of this, we can get this distance here. So A is the, the distance, the, the position of the cat is now square root of 657 feet away from A. And that is about tw approximately 25 feet. So there, that's an answer. And so to check our answer, if it is right, well, just go back to the problem. Um, the cat walks from A to B and that's about 27. And then one third of 27 is nine. And one third of nine is three. So that's three, nine, and 27. That's really 39 feet. And uh, looking at this uh, triangle, this is a right triangle because this is a square. And this is 3, this side here is 3, this side here is 3, so this is a rectangle. And so this is also 90 degrees. And this is 9, so this must be 9. This is 27, so this is 3, so this must be 24. And then checking our Pythagorean theorem, we get the square root of 657 uh, feet. And that's our, our answer. And our last question is this one. Show that 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 25 plus 64 is equal to 8 times 13. So what we're going to do here is first we'll draw 8 times 13. Well, how do we draw 8 times 13? Well, let's just uh, use Excel again and draw some grids like this. And then we're going to show that 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 25 plus 64 is equal to 8 times 13. So let's write that down. Let's write that down. Um, let's copy that. And let's write that down. Okay. So this is what we need to show. We need to show this number. Okay. So this is what we're going to, to do. Um, first, we're going to... Um, 
draw our um, this 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 thing here. This thing is um, eight by thirteen. All right. Okay. So just a moment. So, okay, there. So this thing here, this thing here is um, this thing. That's eight, 8 times 13. Now, what about 64? Well, 64 is just 8 times 8. So that's 8 times 8. So let's fill it up with a, a red one. And then what about 25? 25 is just 5 times 5. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5. Okay. That's just 25. Um, let's choose a different color. 25. And what about 9? 9 is just 3 times 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So that's 3 times 3. Let's use again another color. And then what about 4? Four? 4 is just 2 times 2. So 2 times 2, that's 4. And then notice that we have a 1 here, 1 here, and another 1 there. And there you go. We've just shown that 1 plus 1 plus 4, 4 squares, plus 9 squares, plus 25 squares, plus 64 squares is indeed 8 times 13. So, as usual, uh, we prepared a lot of uh, problems for you. So, try them out. This one is about links. This one is about these, uh, these numbers here. And then, we have, a, we have a chessboard here. And next time, uh, we're going to be discussing solving problems by making a list or table.